So as we saw in the previous chapter, Izuku has lost his arms as well as seemingly being defeated by All for One and just waiting to be killed until now because he's actually getting his arms back and he's getting reinforcements from the rest of Class 1A and Aizawa because they're all coming to save the day at the end here. And how Izuku gets his arms back is pretty interesting because it's one of the things that we were speculating about and it's actually from Eri. Eri is regrowing Izuku's arms that he lost in the battle against All for One and like the memory vestige world thing that he was in along with Shigaraki slash Tenko. Now, Eri's not exactly showing up there in person, but it's actually her horn from her head that is being used without her being there. And it could just regrow his arms because, you know, that's how her rewind quirk works. It kind of reverses time, I suppose. It's never outright fully explicitly stated that that is the case, I guess, but that's pretty much what it is. Now we'll also go into the logistics of that because we also have to go over uh, the beginning of this chapter which is kind of crucial to all that stuff. So we saw at the end of the previous chapter Aizawa had showed up coming out of a Kurogiri warp gate right to where Izuku was to help him against All for One along with Sero, Sato, and Jiro. And we're finding out how he was able to do that because the last time I think we saw Aizawa along with President Mike was when they were kind of like pseudo battling Kurogiri and it turns out that they had fallen off of UA and gone through Kurogiri's like activated warp gate and went to just some random island I guess or something and there they were able to have their final breakthrough with him because you know Kurogiri originally is Shirakumo who was like the third member of like their friend group between Aizawa and present Mike when they were students in the second year of UA. And back in the day, Shirakumo was killed on a mission. We don't see this actually in the series, but it does happen in the spin-off My Hero Academia Vigilantes. I think it was chapter 63 where Shirakumo was like on a work-study mission with Aizawa, and while they were in the city, there was like this villain Garvey, and he attacked. I think it was like a uh, elementary school or something like that, preschool, something like that. And as Shirakumo was like trying to protect the kids with his cloud quirk, he was like hit by the falling debris, and it essentially killed him. However, before his body was able to be recovered by like the heroes or the police or the firefighters or whatever, of course, it was Dr. Yujiko who was able to find him. And with his body, Yujiko was able to make him into a Nomu that we know now as Kurogiri. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Extra Wallet. So if you've been following my channel for some time now, you'll know that I love the Extra Wallet. I've been using it for almost four years now. In fact, Exter is one of the first sponsors that we've had on the channel. And the main reason I love Exter Wallet is because it's super slim and it has quick card access. That's right, it has a trigger mechanism that pops up your card. Like I said, I've been using this for almost four years now and it still never gets old. Recently, I just got the Parliament Wallet, which has premium leather, extra pocket for cash or cards, holds up to 12 cards, blocks RFID, which is wireless theft, and comes in six colors. You can also get a tracker card for it which always lets you know the location of where it is it also has a ringing feature and has a three hour solar charge that lasts for two full months so guys now is the best time to get an extra wallet because they're currently running their spring sale where you'll get up to 20% off site-wide, but also if you use my code ZONIN1, you'll get up to 25% off. Thanks, guys. He, like, altered his cloud quirk into becoming Kurogiri's warp gate quirk, and he also altered, like, his personality so that he would become, like, the caretaker uh, of Shigaraki, I suppose. But as we saw, you know, way back when Kurogiri was captured and brought to Tartarus and was interrogated by Aizawa and President Mike, there still is like an aspect of Shirakumo in him, in there somewhere. And they're able to bring that forth again here in this chapter, but not fully bring Shirakumo through. Like the way that they talk about Shirakumo in this chapter, it doesn't seem like he'll ever be able to go back to being just fully Shirakumo again. The best they could do is kind of bring him to like this half state of consciousness between him and Kurogiri, but 
they're able to do that long enough to get full control over Kurogiri's quirk. So now they can just start teleporting all over the place and start bringing people to the battle, you know, in order to help Izuku and finally end this war. Also, let me put it out there that this is yet another problem that Eri can easily fix, in my opinion. If she was able to gather up enough time energy in her horn for her rewind quirk to activate long enough, she could, in theory, rewind Kurogiri back to being shirakumo and i really don't care if you guys disagree with me on that i know eri's rewind capabilities are very decisive but given from what we've seen pretty sure she could do that and we're also going to talk more about eri's quirk and the possibilities of it and the fact that horikoshi doesn't want to abuse it because i guess he just thinks it would be too easy and maybe would ruin the story In my opinion i don't think it would uh but you know we'll, we'll get into that a little more but anyway like i said now that they have slight control and temporary control over Kurogiri's warp gate now they're able to go to where Tsukuuchi is in the one of the shelters and they start asking for whoever can help them because uh, apparently Monoma is unable to fight anymore because he has like a concussion or something because earlier on in this arc we saw that Monoma was using Aizawa to be like a conduit for his erasure quirk but I guess they're not going to be able to do that anymore I'm sure Monoma will come back in at some point at the end here but we see that one of the people that Aizawa is able to recruit here at like this shelter is a character by the name of Astro now don't worry we've never seen Astro before in this series but if you're like a hardcore Horikoshi fan or just hardcore into Shonen Jump then you probably know who Astro is because he was from a series that Horikoshi previously made and was actually published in Jump back in 2012. Uh, the series is called Sensei no Bulge, or I think it's also known as Barrage. But yeah, this guy Astro was the main character of that series. And unfortunately, it only ran a couple months in Jump, which of course meant that it was canceled, which is actually pretty impressive for Horikoshi because he went from, in a span of like months, having this series canceled and then making My Hero uh, later on in 2013. And of course, it went on to be one of the biggest Jump series of all time. So it shows you guys don't give up on your dreams or, or don't even just give up on trying to achieve something it doesn't even have to be your dreams i don't want to be too sappy with that stuff but yeah just keep going it's okay to fail you're you're gonna learn a lot from it you're, you're probably gonna learn more from your failure than your victories to be honest but anyway i don't think this is literally astro it's just some guy that looks like him it's kind of like an easter egg because astro lives in like a very different world than the my hero world but anyway just wanted to point out that fun little easter egg we're also also seeing that there's like another fight that has been going on but this is happening in a flashback uh, because Tsuguchi tells Aizawa that back at Takoba, Sero Sato and a bunch of other heroes are still fighting one of these villains by the name of Ghastly, which we've only seen like once or twice, I think, so far in this war. He's the guy that kind of looks like the Babadook, I suppose. And we're not seeing the conclusion of this fight, but we do see that Tokage Kaminari and Ectoplasm come in to help with that battle. But we know that they at least won here or something because like we were talking about, Sero Sato and Jiro were at this battle and at the end of the previous chapter they come to help Izuku so they left this fight because I guess either the others took over to defeat Gashley or he was defeated it ultimately doesn't really matter this is kind of just a placeholder that I think Horikoshi put here but anyway Aizawa eventually comes to where Izuku is you know picking up from the end of the previous chapter and he asks him like you know how long has it been since you lost your arms and he doesn't really know because you know it happened in the mental world and it seems like time clearly wasn't passing uh the way that it does in real time but he says that he could also feel that Shigaraki was rebelling inside of all for one but not anymore and that's because we saw that when All for One took over the Shigaraki vessel, he kind of ate Shigaraki's consciousness. And it seems like he was killed at that point, but he definitely wasn't because he also felt that there was like this faint voice in his head. And that's why he put the hand over his mouth to kind of shut it up. And either that was Shigaraki or it was Tenko. It was probably the latter, to be honest, because, you know, this has to end with Tenko coming back. 
Shigaraki's kind of a lost cause, and it was always showed that there was an aspect of Tenko still there. But then we're coming to Eri, because we're seeing a flashback of her giving her horn to Aizawa. You know, like we said, this is how Izuku's going to grow his arms back. And apparently she broke off her horn with the help of Ectoplasm, because I guess she was inspired by Aizawa cutting off his leg in the previous war when Shigaraki threw the quirk-destroying bullet at him, you know, so that it wouldn't spread to his quirk factor. But she gives the horn to Aizawa because she knows that she can't go to the battlefield, and that she was also waiting to use this on All Might and Bakugo. And here's where I'm going to go into my little mini rant about all this stuff. First of all, I have been campaigning for Eri to use her quirk on All Might uh, since Eri was introduced, essentially. And I honestly think it was a waste that she didn't. Because if she rewound All Might to a state of where he could you know, deliver a United States of Smash, you know, at least bring him to, like, the beginning of Season 3 mode, he would have been so monumentally helpful for the rest of this series. But then again, I guess it just would have been too easy, right? I mean, that's why All Might got shelved, because he was too powerful. I'm not going to give you any spoilers on other series, but that's happened in, a, in another really big shonen lately. There was a character that was just too powerful, and they kind of had to bench him, because I guess the story would have just been too easy. But then again, like, at this point, you could just keep upping the power creep, because only Izuku and Shigaraki and All for One are leaps above everyone else. So it ultimately comes down to just Goku having to save the day. So if you could just have more people out there that are around that level of power, I think it makes things more interesting. And especially All Might's my favorite character, so maybe I'm a little biased, but I think everyone will be down with All Might rewinding to become powerful again. But then again, we did get him having the armored All Might suit. So like I said when we were reviewing that, it's better than nothing. Now, you know, Eri, her quirk is just too busted. She could just fix all problems. And, you know, like I also said, maybe Horikoshi feels like that would ruin the series. But then again, he is the one who introduced it. And it's just unfortunate because I, I see this a lot with these mangakas, especially in like Jump series. It's that they're not ambitious enough. I wish that they did more ambitious things and kind of just threw caution to the side and just did fantastical things and make it more exciting. I'm not saying break your story, but I think taking big swings that end in big positive notes are better than ones that end in negative. For example, like just randomly killing like a big character. Instead of just killing off a big character or diluting the story into something that doesn't really interest people anymore, just do something fantastical and just buff somebody, bring somebody back from the dead. Like that's why I really, really enjoyed the final arc of Naruto. Like once the Edo Tensei stuff started coming in, I was like, wow, this is incredible. I wish more series did this. But I digress. Eri ultimately says that she wants to sing like Jiro because, you know, that was like her big moment in the series, the end of season four. After all the overhaul stuff wrapped up, she saw the big concert and she kind of wants to recreate that essentially. That's like her dream. And then she wants Deku to see it uh, along with everybody else when the war is over. So I guess that's kind of a hint as to what the final chapter will be maybe or one of the final chapters after this is all wrapped up. But Aizawa was like, hey, you know, this is what Eri wants. You can't can't die until you hear her sing. So then he gives Izuku the piece of Eri's horn and his arms that he had lost start to grow back. But it says that it should take like two to three minutes for him to heal. So that's like a little timer there, which is nice because we also see other portals opening with essentially the rest of class 1A coming through. We don't literally see all of them. We see Mineta, Kaminari, Shoji, Momo, Koda, and some others too. But it would just be fitting to have it come full circle here and all class 1A students come through to fight all for one, uh, you know, in their last moment in this series or their last moments of battle in the series. And I guess Aizawa is going to help them, you know, being the class teacher uh, with Erasure to shut down All For One's quirks. He's still powerful, of course, but at least he can't use all of his busted abilities. And then while they're fighting him, that will be enough time for Izuku to regain his arms. Now, I don't know how far back he's being rewound here. I don't know if Eri's horn is bringing him back to having a quirk factor again, so that he has one for all, or he has embers of it. It's still not fully explained. We still don't really know what's going on with this stuff yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets rewound enough to have at least the base one for 
for all. Like, he's probably not gonna have the other vestiges, quirk factors in him, which I think is fine. If he just is like All Might, you know, I think that would be pretty cool, unless Horikoshi just plans to end the series with him ultimately being quirkless, which I guess would also be bookending the series. He starts the series quirkless and ends the series quirkless, but still as a hero somehow? I don't know. I mean, obviously he couldn't be like a full-blown hero without one for all. I mean, I guess he could have support gear, but that would kind of be lame to be honest. But um, I I'm not really sure, but let me know what you think is going to happen with Izuku. Is he going to be rewound enough to have the quirk or is he just going to be quirkless and I don't know, somehow be strong enough to land like a finishing blow or he doesn't and he just talks Tenko through all for one and saves him that way possibly or he's just support gear guy uh let me know and if you like the video guys please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already have a great day and i'll see you in the next one